Welcome back to Drag System 5. My name is Byron. Hope you guys are doing well. This is the 2021 Alexis LC500 convertible, and I've had it as a press loan from Lexus for the last little bit. I have a full formal review on it linked up there in the card or down in the description below. And when I get these cars, I used to do just formal reviews and that was it. Now I started trying to mix it up, add some POV drives, and now do this kind of informal living with type video. So I've had it for the last little bit and you know, when I do the review, it's all kind of in the moment. And this is more so a little bit after the fact, kind of like had a little time to digest and just overall gonna share what I like about it, what I don't like about it after having spent, you know, a good bit of time. And I'm in, in and out of a lot of different vehicles. I had the GTR the week before I got the new Escalade over there. So I get a good variety of cars and I wanna share my experience and just kind of what it's like living with it. So overall, it's been pretty fun. Haven't driven it as much as I would have liked to given the fact that it was pretty snowy just uh, three or four days ago. You wouldn't believe it, but this was fully covered here in snow. It's since melted, so this is actually a really nice day to go for a drive. But as far as the overall exterior, we got it running right now. Pretty funny thing here, I couldn't figure out how to open up the trunk. You can, of course, use the key fob or the button on the inside, and I'm like, where the heck is the button? I tried this, you know, tried to find it down here. It's actually here in the tail lamp which is kind of cool a little hidden easter egg there so to speak truck space was all right you know not huge but it got the job done for what i needed is mainly camera equipment i didn't actually take this to the grocery store or you know anything like that so nothing big but a little bit of camera equipment no problem there this has to take the cake for the softest interior lining this felt is just so soft here on the interior of this trunk compartment underneath here you got your battery and some other different storage down through here. Now this is a kind of hard trunk to close. I always talk about this in my videos, you guys probably get tired of it, but it is. I mean, it's like hard to, there's a handle here, but it doesn't necessarily want to shut very well. I got that try. Prior to that, it wasn't that easy. I got the windscreen up in the back right now. Let's go ahead and hop in. Let you guys take a quick look at the interior. I'll talk about some of the stuff I like and don't like in here. Rear seat, pretty much gonna be uh, non-existent. For anyone, I'm six foot five inches tall for point of reference, so the person sitting behind me, uh, well, wouldn't have any leg room at all. So uh, ideally, this is a, it's a four seater, right? But it'd have to be someone really short in the front, really short in the rear, or you got you know, kids back there maybe. Um, but generally, this is probably just gonna be a good place for storage, at least that's what I kind of used it for when I was driving it. But that's, when the windscreen's up, uh, obviously you couldn't have any passengers because that cuts down on, you know, all that room through there. As far as this goes, this was an initial gripe for me in my review. I said it's kind of like hard to get used to. There's the pattern for it. It's kind of like a joystick. It took a little getting used to. Still not perfectly gotten used to it. Uh, getting it into neutral is definitely tough. Uh, I can I can barely do it here on uh, camera. I'm not, not exaggerating. But, you know, I only spent a couple of weeks with this. I, I have a feeling if I you know, live with it for a few months or a year. Obviously, I kind of get to know it in and out and would have a good feel and be able to work everything, you know, uh, perfectly. Another thing was this little compartment here to open and close the roof and then the windows for the rear. I would forget to, I'd like do it and then I'd forget to flop this down. I'd almost prefer if this was kind of somewhere else where it was easily accessible because like I said, I'd pop it up, put down the top, you know, go back to driving and realized I had this left open all the time. Not a big deal, didn't get really get in the way, but almost prefer if that was somewhere else. Another thing, this is not touch screen. There's not a whole lot of hard keys. You pretty much got to use this touchpad here, which is responsive and works well and has that haptic feedback, kind of like on a phone or laptop, but it's not the easiest if you want to do something quickly. So, you know, you're out driving, let's say you're getting hot, you got your heated seat on, you want to turn it off because you're burning up which is what happened to me a few times. You know, let's say you're out on menu or map or something, you're here, you can't just press a button and, you know, turn off your heated seat or lower it. You have to go in here, menu, uh, scroll over to climate. Um, then you gotta scroll over here, go to seating, uh, pop over here, and then go up. So it's not like a quick little thing, and especially if you're driving and you wanna be focused on driving. Now, see, I got my headrest on right now for the climate concierge, I wanna turn that off, swipe through there. So, I mean, of course, once you get used to it, again, I only spend a little bit of time in it. I don't get to 
actually own it for a really long time and, and get to know the little nooks and crannies of it but uh, at least my time that was something that took a little uh, getting used to and I just wish there were some more buttons but as far as the actual driving experience let's go ahead and take it out right now and take it for a drive you can change between the different modes up here on the steering wheel or behind the steering wheel rather and we're in eco now so we'll just pop up here into sport plus and it's got a diamond knurling texture on there i do like that that way your fingers won't slip when you're changing between the different modes over here you got traction control off and then snow so that's interesting uh the placement of that and uh it's pretty easy to do when you're actually you know out driving um although you will have to take a hand off the wheel to get it um some it's like a knob down here or a knob down here either way you're pretty much gonna have to take a hand off unless it was like a you know thumb control through there so i will say this too uh before we go out and drive it's a fun car to drive but it takes a little bit like it takes a lot of energy uh and i mean that in the sense that like some cars you just drive normal and it's like fast and loud and aggressive like all the time like no matter what uh this one you really do have to kind of try a little bit like you're either utilizing the paddle shifters or accelerating hard off the line if you just drive it just like normal just kind of cruising around you're really not going to know you're in like a you know powerful v8 uh you're really reminded of that whenever you do some downshifts and you hear the sports exhaust open up or whenever you again kind of floor it off the line then it really like ramps up but beyond that, it's just kind of like a normal driving experience, which I think some people will like uh, because you could daily drive it and it's not like a burden and it's not annoying having to, you know, just drive around town and have it like, you know, be crazy and make a lot of noise. But uh, again, it, some cars are just naturally aggressive and loud. Um, this one has the potential to be that, but it's not like that all the time. So we're gonna do a quick spin around the block here and I'll show you what I mean and then we'll wrap up this quick little informal video. So like I mentioned, we are in Sport Plus mode. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Blue skies, 73 degrees. I mean, what more could you ask for? So we're cruising right now about 40 miles an hour, 3000 RPM. I'm not really hearing much exhaust. Not really hearing a whole lot of wind noise thanks to that windscreen. And right now, just driving normal, I wouldn't think that I'm in you know, a 471 horsepower V8. But you hit a couple downshifts. There you go. There's a good reminder. Another one. Yeah. Now, I, I did have to floor it. I did have to really get on it. I had to do three downshifts and really kind of get on it. And you might be like, Byron, it's like that with every car. Some cars, you barely give it a little gas and you're like, holy cow, like I can tell this car is ready to rumble. This one, again, you kind of just give it a little gas and you're not, you're just kind of like, huh? Um, so right now we're just driving D3. There you go. So 4,000 RPM range, it starts to kind of wake up and let you know that it means business. And uh, there you go, D3, or actually four. There's three. Two's gonna be wild. Yep. It, it definitely sounds good and definitely feels good, but it's, this is one of those cars that's a little exhausting. You know, you, you, you do that and you, dri you drive around, around like that for an hour and you're gonna be kind of like drained by the time you get home. Would this car make sense for me? No, probably not. Um, I've been daily driving a convertible for the last couple years and I'm kind of out of the convertible mode every now and then it's nice to have a convertible on a really nice day like today sure I, I would love that this would be absolutely amazing uh, as my daily driver for me probably not could you daily drive this absolutely it's comfortable there's enough headroom for me there's enough space to do what you need to do uh, but for me probably not the best option so I hope you enjoyed this little informal review if you did be sure to leave a like if you got any questions or comments about this vehicle, leave it down in the comment section below. If you've not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to watch the full review I did on this, as well as uh, check out some of the other videos on my channel too. And we will see you guys in the next video. It's a motorcycle in front of me messing up my uh, audio. <laughs> I wanted to do an acceleration for you here. Here we go. There you go. That
that was pure Lexus performance audio right there. No other uh, distractions. We'll see you guys in the next one.